So I wanted to make a video about how I use Todoist, which is the uh, to-do application app that I use on my phone, my computer, and my iPad, kind of like everywhere. Um, this is kind of like the setup. I usually have it on my today of things that I have to do today. So today, Tuesday, January 3rd, these are a couple of things I have to do today. So usually I just add a task by typing Q, which is the prompt, you know, add a task, enter, and I'll add it, right? Uh, all of them go to a thing called inbox, but if you don't want it to go to an inbox, you could um, let me put up the prompt again so you guys can see it. Type a pro uh, type the task in the name of the project. For example, this needs to go under professional work, and then I'll get assigned to a particular project that you created, and you could create a number of projects here. I don't necessarily find the project you know part super useful, but I like to use it personally for kind of like organizational purposes. So one of the main features that Todoist has that probably all to-do apps have now is that they can get sync to your calendar. And so one thing that, for example, I like doing is I'm going to work on a project called Prep, which is a project in HIV, you know, today at 9.30 a.m. And it'll create that task over there but also it would create it here on my um, calendar. So here you see just kind of, I have one that has already been created, but now then this new one has been created and I can just extend it into how long I want that task to last. And now I have a block in my calendar um, that is attached to that task. And that's gonna be super helpful into making sure that all my tasks have an assigned time in my calendar of like things that I need to do. Um, and that's gonna be useful because I use to do is for work stuff and also for personal stuff. And so if I only just put my work stuff in my calendar, I don't really have time to do my personal stuff, but I also need to do personal stuff. Like for example, you know, whatever, film this video or I need to call Philips or something I need to do. I need to, I put them with a particular time so that it syncs to my calendar. Um, and then I can see all the stuff I need to do. And so that's going to be, I think, a, a first main feature of Todoist that I really enjoy and like. Now, the nice thing is if I create an event here on this calendar, the green calendar, it will also pop up on a task on a particular day and a particular time. So it kind of works uh, a little bit in both ways. So that's one of the first features that I really like. The second feature that I really like is that it has natural language and processing. And what that means is that I can just add a task, like for example, go to the post office and I wanna do this on Friday, probably afternoon. And I'll just create that for Friday afternoon. So here I can wait Friday afternoon, maybe at some point it will pop up here. But the the point, the point is, um, is that I can just use kind of like any natural language, like tomorrow at 3 p.m. or tomorrow morning or next week or every two other weeks or any kind of like combination of that. And it will actually create the tasks that I need to do for that particular time. The way I use this in kind of like on the go is in order to create kind of like calendar events. So for example, let's say I need to meet someone tomorrow at 3 p.m. Instead of going to my calendar and creating that event because I'm on the go, I'm with my phone, I just open to do this on my phone and I do tomorrow 3 p.m. You know, uh, coffee with Jonathan or something like that. So that's another feature that I use of Todoist a lot. Um, the other feature that I uh, end up using a lot too is this board feature. So here I can see uh, kind of like my week at a glance. And that's really nice because it can allows me to see what I need to do in every single day in terms of like things that I've scheduled. But it also allows me to change things. For example, I want to do this annual review thing, which I do at the start of every year. You can notice that it doesn't have a time assigned to it. So like if we go to the today view, right, it doesn't really have a time. And here, when it doesn't have a time, it kind of appears as a day uh, event. Notice, by the way, that the post office thing was created. Um, so when when that's the case, uh, the, the, you know, in some sense, I can maybe get to this at night once I'm done with all this task, or I can decide to, okay, this is a day where I don't have a lot of stuff to do. So I'm going to put here, and now I'm going to put a time like 4 p.m. or something like that, right? So I could, I could be doing that. Um, and that's a nice thing about board view. It's kind of like lets you know what are the days that you're like pretty packed versus not pretty packed. And it's you like 
uh, drag and drop different tasks in, in different places. Another thing that I find really useful is to obviously subtask. So for example, I can create a task, which is, you know, prepare a package for somebody I need to send. And then here you can add a description, right? Of like what information you need here, maybe a code or something, also a subtask. Um, so like maybe that's research prices of camera, uh, buy camera, uh, pack camera, and then go to post office, right? And so I can break this down into several small tasks and assign this to different days. Um, you could also add comments here if you want. And in comments, um, you can attach files. So this is actually super useful and I use this a lot. Um, the way I use it is usually um, to two things. So sometimes in a conference, they give you the schedule on PDF. And therefore I would, that day I don't have any tasks because I'm gonna be in a conference. So that day may look super empty and I just look like conference schedule. And I just literally add the um, the schedule on PDF here. And it can hold any document, any PDF, videos, pictures, you name it. Um, so I use it for conference schedule. Let's say I need to read a paper to do a referee report or because you wanna read a paper, I put it here as an attachment. So you can attach anything that you want and so in that task, if I'm on my iPad, for example, I need to read this paper. I don't need to go to my computer or, or email to me. It's like everything is there. Or um, I could also attach emails. I attach pictures. So for example, if I need to deal with a tracking number for a receipt and I, I create a task that says, hey, uh, see how this tracking is doing You know, a week from now, I can put the picture of the receipt there and I have the tracking number. So it's a really nice way of just kind of like condensing everything that you need into this app so that you can make things a little bit easier. Another thing I wanted to mention is about how I kind of use this task. I use this task just kind of like as, as spaces in time. Like for example, I have this task of work on prep. Uh, that means I just need to work on that project. But what I don't have um, is, for example, like a set of to-do lists in that particular project. Like I used to keep that um, here, you know, I would I would write the things that I need to do. I don't really do that anymore. I like to keep this clean. I just like for time management, I usually use um, Notion to keep track of the to-dos that I need for that particular project. Um, so that's my kind of like own way of handling it. This is more, it's not like for a particular work, it's not all the tasks that I need to do in that particular project. It's just, hey, work on that project and make some advances. Oh, another big one that is super useful is the emailing one. So for example, Let's say I need to, okay, this is perfect. This is a new email. I wanna read this email and make sure I you know, pay attention to the attachment, although the attachment is nothing. So what I do is forward, and then I just press to do is, and I have a particular email for to do is, and I'm gonna put a date, which is today, and send. And what this is going to do is, it's going to create um, a task uh, for today, because I put that date today of that email. And if it has any attachment, it's going to put it here. So here's the actual email and here's whatever attachment it came to it, which it's not really necessary. But what, the reason why this is super useful for me is because I'm an inbox serial type of person. So because I put it in my to-do list, I can just click here done and it's archives it. And so it's out of my email, but it's into my to-do list. And so this is a nice way of processing email, especially the email that or the type of emails that are like, okay, this is gonna take me you know, 30 minutes to work on this one particular email to respond to that. So I just put it as a task and then eventually I have to find time in my calendar. So I usually put it, you know, whatever, a random time, 4 p.m. today. And then I can either go to my calendar or go to board, board view to be like, okay, when can I work on this? So maybe I can work on this, you know, here. It's a great way of making sure that your email gets processed as well because some emails take a lot of time. Now, granted, other I also do have sometimes uh, a work on email tasks where I just kind of like any email that is easy to respond, I'll I'll put it there tomorrow, for example. So tomorrow I need to work on emails, you know, from nine to nine thirty or something like that. Um, so other things that are nice is um, that this app works in a bunch of different platforms from your Apple Watch, iPhone, iPads, computers, uh, web, et cetera, all the Android devices, all the tablets. Um, and that makes it so that you can 
add this stuff from anywhere. It also works through text message too. I don't, I don't find that particularly useful, but some people find it useful. The last thing that um, I use, and this is I only use it when days where I've accumulated a bunch of tasks and I haven't given myself time to prioritize them, is a priority type of setup. So let's say the things that I really want to do today are this one. I'm going to put priority two. I really need to work on this project. So I'm going to put it as priority one. I'm going to add one more, which is annual review, which I had before. And that's going into personal. It's actually something that I do online or on the computer, and it's a home project, right? And this I may do. I haven't assigned a time or not. So I'm going to put this one priority three and this one priority four, right? And then what I do is group by priority, and that's it. Right. So what's nice about this priority view is that I usually only like to have like one task per priority, like not a lot of stuff. Um, and so on days where I have a lot of stuff to do, I usually use this priority system to be like, what is priority number one? What is two? What is three? And all the other ones are on four. So this will be like a bunch of different tasks here that, you know, I just need to assign them to a time and a place in my in my week in my calendar but these are the three things i need to get done today so that kind of helps a little bit their, their prioritization and if you have a lot of stuff to do this is definitely something that has been evolving and maybe will keep evolving over time but the way i used to do it is it's been now eight years it's been a pretty consistent use i've used it in many different ways i used to take advantage of the project thing a lot more now i kind of like ignore it uh, there's other nifty things that you can share lists so for example we have our shopping list here where it's sync with my wife to do is um, and also sync with Alexa. So if I say, you know, uh, echo at uh, dry sheets to the shopping list, it would add dryer sheets. And what's nice is that whenever one of us is in the grocery store, we can just check this shopping list to see if we've gotten everything that we need to get. Um, but anyways, uh, those are the kind of like nice features and the way I been using to do is and, and how it works and hopefully uh, you all get to find a way to find it super useful and that you enjoy this one year gift to the subscription. Anyways, bye.